How hot does the new PlayStation 5 get? Well, to find out, I've got the console and I've also got a thermal imaging camera. Let's find out. So I've got the new PS5 and I've so far installed a couple of games and it's basically in its standby mode right now. I've got the thermal camera set up to give us a good reading of the console itself. And right now we can see that it is currently somewhere around 17 degrees. The ambient temperature in the room is about 14 degrees, 13.8. So it's only a few degrees warmer than the ambient room right now when it's in standby mode. The console is doing some things in the background while it's in standby, updating some of the games, doing some other downloads, so it's not fully off. This is exactly the same that I found when I did the same heat test with the Xbox Series X. It is doing things in the background. There are power settings you can choose if you want your console to be completely switched off, not using any power, but for the most part, you will want it to be doing some updates in the background, and as a result, it will be generating a little bit of power while it's doing it. Now the thermal imaging camera that I'm using is actually the CAT S62 Pro phone. Now, this is actually a FLIR thermal imaging camera built into this phone. So it is actually giving us proper thermal imaging capturing. Okay, so we're at the main menu. We can see Astro's Playroom, we've got Spider-Man, we've got Bug Snacks. I'm not gonna load any of these games just yet. We are just going to let the console sit in the menu system for a few minutes and see whether or not it starts to use any more power. So I can see that it is steadily climbing. It's now at 19.3 degrees Celsius. It's about one degree warmer than it was when it was in standby mode does look like it's fluctuating a little bit, um, so it's not an exact science, um, but it is giving us a rough overview. What is quite interesting is seeing where the heat is coming out. We can just see the faint outline of the whole console here, but it really does seem to be in the bottom part where most of the heat is being generated, um, and also at the back, which is where the fan is mostly blowing out the, uh, the heat exhaust. So it's warming up the back wall, and also down at the bottom on the table. But the top part of the console seems pretty cool. Okay, I've given this a few minutes and it seems to be lingering at around the 18.5 to 19 degrees. So I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna start playing a game. And I think what I'm gonna play is uh, Astro's Playroom. This is the default game that's installed on the PlayStation 5. Um, and apparently it's really, really fun. Um, so I'm gonna give that a go. This is a bit of a, um, of an example game. Um, I don't think it's the most graphically demanding, so I'm not expecting this to be really taxing the console um, and to be causing it to heat up to a huge degree, but it will be interesting to see what it does. Okay, I'm noticing just while I'm playing this that the temperature has risen to 21.7 degrees C. That's about one degree no, one and a half degrees to two degrees higher than in the menu system. So it is climbing. I'm gonna keep on playing this for a little while longer and see where that temperature goes. Okay, it's been a few more minutes now and I can see that it's gone to 24.4. That's five, six degrees higher than when it was in the menu. So the console is definitely starting to work harder. Hello, I'm an old PS1. Why don't you love me? So I've been playing this game for about 20 minutes and as we can see, the temperature has gone up to about 28.5 degrees C. Now I did look over and see that it spiked somewhere around 30 degrees. And again, we can really clearly see that all of the heat is very much focused around the bottom of the console and in particular, all of the heat exhaust that's going against my back wall. It might be time now to fire up something a little bit more demanding. So let's go back to my home. Let's give the Final Fantasy VII Remake a go. That's a nice glossy looking game. Should be a bit more demanding of the console. So we're at about 28 degrees C playing this at the moment, which is actually a little bit less than it was when we we're playing Astro's Playroom. Maybe just because this intro bit isn't too demanding. So I'm gonna keep on going for a little bit 
and see how it gets. It's dropped to 26 degrees. This really isn't doing a lot to uh, tax the console apparently, so let's keep on going. So playing Final Fantasy VII Remake, if anything, cooled it down. It was uh, mostly around the 26 degree mark, which is um, about three or four degrees lower than just playing Astro's Playroom. So the last game I'm going to try is Bug Snacks. Now this is quite a fun cartoony game. I don't imagine this is going to be much of a problem for the console either. I don't anticipate this uh, really ramping up the temperature, but I don't really have any big titles um, already on the console, which I think will, uh, will get those temperatures up. So I've been playing this for a little while and I can see that the temperature has gone up to about 31 degrees. I think it was around 31 uh, and a half at one point. Again, the heat temperature is very much focused at the bottom of the console and being uh, ejected onto the wall behind. I'm gonna keep on playing um, a little bit. I'm gonna run around now that the world has sort of opened up a little bit, see if that makes any difference. Um, but really, I think it's gonna take some more demanding games to tax the console. Um, these ones with these sort of cartoony graphics aren't really pushing the boundaries of what the PS5 can do. So I'm not expecting this to get close to the 40, 45 degrees that we saw on the Xbox One X, uh, Xbox Series X rather, but that was playing uh, more demanding games like Gears 5 and Forza Horizon 4. So I would expect the uh, Series X to show much higher temperatures. Well, cutting to a few hours later and I finally got Spider-Man to download. Now I have already seen that the console is heating up quite a bit and just in taking us to the, uh, the opening screens of the game. Uh, if we can take a look at the temperature, we're at 35 and a half degrees C. Um, again, very much focusing around the back of the console down here. Um, so let's dive into the game a little bit more and see how hot it goes. Whee! Okay, we're at 34 degrees. Let's go into the sunlight. Make it trace some more rays. In the end, I played around 25 to 30 minutes of Spider-Man and definitely was the most demanding game that I played. We got temperatures up to around 35, 36 degrees C, which really isn't too bad. Now on the Xbox Series X, I got much higher temperatures, around 45, I believe, which uh, was playing more demanding games, things like uh, Gears 5 and Forza Horizon 4. Now I don't have huge demanding games to test on the PS5 right now. So this is gonna be a bit of a work in progress, something that we'll probably come back to, and particularly once we get even more demanding games, things like Cyberpunk 2077, particularly games that we can play on both consoles and see how they handle those temperatures. Hopefully though, this has been an interesting bit of an insight. If you have enjoyed it, do you please hit that like button, subscribe to CNET, and make sure to leave your comments in the box below.